Hello, and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And we're going to continue talking about red cell morphology. We're going to talk about another blood parasite. We're going to talk about Babesia. Babesia is pretty cool um, and endemic to the area where we are. We're up in the, uh, the Northeast. Um, so summertime comes around and we'll, we will <laughs> see Babesia. There's not really a question. Um, just about how many. Uh, and this slide is just a, this is a great, great slide. Lots of organism going on here. Absolutely. <clears throat> From my little drawing. So I think the first one we should start with is here, just because it's a really nice clear ring form where mm -hmm. you have the dot right here, the chromatin dot, and then you have a nice ring around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so beautiful. And then it's kind of like a nice big ring like this. And one of the, the um, stranger points about uh, Babesia and morphology is the variation, right? Like, because mm -hmm. um, that one is beautiful and one might find it difficult to distinguish versus a plasmodium species, um, that yeah. particular ring in a vacuum. But then you start to see some of the, uh, the other organisms and they can kind of look like really tightly crunched up and kind of twisted around. Yeah. Uh, Babesia is, um, it, if you, once you see it enough times, it becomes the, one of the easier ones to speciate for me, I, personally, I don't know. Because we see it a lot. That's probably, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> but it just, it seems to be the easiest, um, the most recognizable for me, just. Generally. Well, the other thing too is just like uh, when we talked about Plasmodium falciparum, this one has multiple infected cells too. So this one here, you can see there's a ring here, there's a ring here, there's a ring here. This one's got three in it. Yep, yep. I hope as we cruise around, we might see an external organism. Um, so another thing that kind of tips you off for Babesia, uh, with Plasmodium, they're inside the red cells period, right? Um, with Babesia though, they can be kind of just floating around in the, in, in the peripheral blood. Um, and I remember uh, a, a situation where there was a clump of Babesia organisms that at a quick glance, you might think were platelets. And they were in fact, just a bunch of, bunch of organisms. So we'll see if we come across some. That makes us look at this clump of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, little yeah. platelet. Then he looks like a platelet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But certainly, yeah, you get, you, you got to be careful. Uh, yeah. As you go. Yeah. Um, but I think but yeah. the cool thing about this, this field in particular is this one, this one, this one this one this one all of these red cells that i'm putting little red dots on have organisms in them that i can see from here and that means i'm also missing some that, that most definitely have organisms but a lot of these cells this this patient clearly had a high parasitemia mm -hmm. the yeah, other thing like like you were saying is that they all look different mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and that's that's a kind of a Babesia trait, um, whereas like Plasmodium falciparum tend to be somewhat consistent with uh, with one another. This is always variability, but um, always. Yeah. I think other than that, there's some echinocytes. Right? Yep. Yep. Pretty perfect. common with blood parasites generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it, really. I don't think that this is a true codocyte. I think this is a weird thing on it just an artifact yep but i don't see Agreed. anything else really no nothing noteworthy all right let's let's move around see what else we can find white cells some neutrophils any organisms looks like there's some in here yeah right yep here some there yeah i have a feeling we're not going to be able to see a field without them to be honest yeah here 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 mm -hmm. oh this is a really nice ring right there that's a nice one yep it's pretty you really see the dot and then the ring mm -hmm. 
Oh, there's another nice ring right there. Okay, another nice ring. And I'm trying to play with the fine tune a little bit more, hoping you can see these little rings. And then just for complete list, these are two neutrophils here. And then this is just a smudge cell. Sorry about that. About what? I didn't even hear anything, so. Good. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Oh. Is that an HJ? It's an HJ. So this is the, a nice segue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What does that suggest when we see a Howell Jolly body? Some kind of stress where the DNA material is not being completely removed from the red cell. Mm hmm. So one of the things that my mind quickly goes to is how well is the spleen functioning or is there a spleen at all? Yeah. Um, so the spleen is a wonderful organ, is, uh, organ <clears throat> um, that hematologists love, right? It's a, <laughs> it's a really important uh, hematological organ. And its job is to facilitate the removal of inclusions and red cells that aren't uh, fit uh, for physiological function. So when I see hollow jolly bodies like this, when I see this many parasites like this, it's very suggestive that the spleen is not functional. Um, if there is so, one. Yeah, right, right. If there is one at all. Um, so, and, and that might be why parasitemia is so high. Yeah. Um, well, I think the other thing that's important to think about with things like how jolly bodies is differentiating it from the parasites. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that should be a worth noting, right? And so, what we'll notice and what we've described in our plasmodium video and now here in Babesia is you have this kind of like chromatin dot and then the ring um, and a Howell Jolly body may be confused for that dot, right? The, the chromatin material. Um, but absent that, uh, that ring, right? So we, we see a dot, but we don't see the ring. I also personally feel that this dot our hollow jolly is very large, right? I, I would not expect a blood parasite to have a chromatin dot this large. Um, Especially with how small these Babesia that we have seen are. So for example, if you look here, there's a Babesia where it's chromatin dot here and it's ring like this. Look at how small that chromatin dot is. It's teeny right. compared to, to this, or even this chromatin dot here this chromatin dot here, these chromatin dots here, here, mm -hmm. both of these red cells, this red cell here has got two, this red cell has got a nice one here with a ring, this one here too has got a nice one with a ring. That's right. a nice organism right there, yeah, wow. So yeah, we, what we want to do is you want to see the DNA, that chromatin, the dark purple, and then you really want to see some kind of ring. And it might not be a ring, like a perfect ring, um, but you, you want to see that, that cytoplasm. Yeah. That parasite. Uh, other than that, there's a kinocytes, and actually there's a few microspherocytes here. I see that as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. One there, over there. Might be owed to some kind of... Um, well, I mean, this the, again, right? These spherocytes would be removed by the spleen in normal circumstances, right? I mean, or they could be formed because of the spleen. So maybe that's the, true too. Maybe the, the spleen is there and it's functioning. Question, but overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I could imagine a circumstance where someone has a healthy functioning spleen and they're just overwhelmed with yeah. with um, parasite. All right, let's move on. See if we find another fun thing to look at. Keeping my eye out for our extracellular organisms. Yeah, that's that would be like the what? Is that a platelet? That's a platelet. Wow. So I came here because of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so incredibly unusual. Uh, we tend to see thrombocytopenia in blood parasites. 
And then you tend to see large platelets in response to thrombocytopenia. Does that track your experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, not unusual to see a giant platelet in a situation like that. That's just huge. It's really he's big. huge and he's stretchy and he's touching. Mm -hmm. He's being a weird platelet. Mm -hmm. But he is a platelet, no nucleus, the alpha granules, the sky blue cytoplasm. He's definitely a platelet. He's just really large and funky looking. But then looking around, there's a ton of parasites. Right? There's one here. I'm not even going to say here because all it's going to be me is saying here, 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 here. But there's a ton of them around. There's many organisms. Yeah, this should be hard to miss for uh, a competent microscopist. Especially this one with this patient having such a high parasitemia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a ton of them here. More giant platelets. Oh, that's just a mature one. There's a couple in here. So there's a really nice ring form here. Really nice one there. And then this one, like you can just see it fairly well that this one's multiply infected. There we go. Just characteristic of Babesia and Plasmodium falciparum will uh, will also do the multiply infected. Yep. And then again, mostly echinocytes. Yep. I think in terms of morphology, that's where I'm at so far. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a few other things here and there, but I think mostly it would be uh, just the echinos, but let's bring, you think he has toxic granulation? Mm. Little uh, tricky for me to see from from here, but the, it does look like the the lilac of the those those granules are prominent, right? Which uh, certainly makes me start thinking about that. Kind of hard to call based off just one neutrophil too. That's, that would be the thing, right? Yeah. So, just for everybody watching, what is toxic granulation? Ah, so toxic granulation is a phenomenon we see typically when there's some kind of a, you know. It, it, it typically accompanies some sort of a left shift, um, but toxic granulation is essentially, and from a morphological perspective, really, really dark, prominent um, granules in our neutrophils. Um, so rather than these faint, dainty, pinpoint uh, purple granules, we get these prominent, big, chunky granules. Uh, still distinct from that of a basophil, or, or, um, but but different. So they're Anything. larger than the pinpoint granules neutrophils usually have, but they're smaller than basophilic granules. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're so purple and prominent is because the pH of the granules is significantly lower, giving mm -hmm. the neutrophil greater kill capacity. So whenever there's stress on the marrow, so think about it during any certain inflammatory infections, um, any of those GCSF therapy, those sorts of times, and you're right, usually with the left shift, which is just an increase in bands and in immature granulocytes, you can see toxic granulation. So that whenever the body, there's stress on the marrow, the marrow automatically says, we need greater kill capacity just in case it's an infection. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's where we would get toxic grain. So this one looks like it is, but again, it's hard to tell just based off of the one. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, let's pop over one more field and see if we can see anything else interesting. Oof. So just looking at this, this neutrophil, the last one does look like it was more toxic grand. Yes, for sure. Which would make sense during a parasitic hemolytic anemia. <laughs> yep. yep, so this is an, our neutrophil that we were just referring to. And then this is a little lymph, like Dave said. And then outside of that, again, we have our echinocytes. It looks like we have just a site over here mm -hmm. and then lots of organisms. So again, there's some here, here, there's two in that one, 
here, here, here. A nice one over here, right here. There's probably a bunch more that I'm just having a hard time seeing. <laughs> but yeah, the, there's there's a lot. Here. We're not wanting for parasites on this slide. Definitely not. Cool. Okay. So yeah, for just to recap for this this patient with Babesia, definitely would call echinocytes. That would be about it, other than the blood parasite. Agreed. One hundred percent. All right. Well, I think that's it for this one. So thanks for watching. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.